Good afternoon everyone, out doing some prospecting, checking out a few cut blocks here. We noticed this uh, huge outcrop here, we're going to go just take a quick look at it. Kind of getting an idea of the geology of the area while we uh, look for some minerals. So we're standing on the exposure, which is a exposure of slightly argillitic basalt. And if you take a look over here, this outcrop, this outcrop over here, that outcrop over there, and all the way over there, all this right there is an exposure of a different kind of host rock or bedrock here than this one. So somewhere along here you have contact between two kinds of rock, two types of country rock. Uh, up there that's looking like a limestone marble combination. Uh, some of the pieces we found uh, look like limestone and marble. So this rock right here, you got slight oxidization, uh, which gives you the presumption that you have some slight iron content. So we'll see uh, what we can find up here. We're just going to hike up here, walk along there, see if there's anything noticeable. So you can see the rocks there. All these rocks, any surface rocks we're finding. It is different than what we're seeing up here. We're about 20 meters away from the outcrop. So there's got to be a contact somewhere between these two types of rock. Probably subsurface and nothing exposed, but we'll see. Definitely limestone. So when Limestone recrystallizes, heat and pressure causes it to turn to marble. So we're definitely looking at limestone here. Maybe a few pieces of marble in the mix. So we're just gonna walk along the base of this outcrop here and uh, down the side here and see if we can find any kind of contact where minerals could potentially be deposited or form. So we haven't found any gold yet today, but these are sure some nice pickers. Gotta love the snacks. So, two different kinds of rock there. Here, we've kind of narrowed down somewhere where the contact zone would be along here close to the bottom of the uh, outcrop and base of the mountain so there's no surface exposure other than an outcrop back there which had a bit of oxidization so we're going to keep going a little bit and then probably call her quits for this place move on okay so we had to uh, come back here hightail it out through to the main road stepped on a bunch of bees nests and uh, had to get out of there for a bit so my prospecting partner is in the bushes over there and he's heading back with the uh, auger to uh, get a couple soil samples where he thinks the contact is and we're going to take those and pan it out, see if we can find any kind of indication of any any mineral. 
any sulfides, any oxides, gold, whatever. We noticed lots and lots of oxidized quartz, um, as well as non-oxidized quartz, which is slightly epidotized, and you have s slight crystallization. Um, and then we also have small little pieces which had uh, coarse-grained iron pyrite. So this was kind of intertwined between the two layers uh, up there where you have your basaltic tuff and your limestone on the upper side. So once he gets back, we'll uh, go ahead and do those pans. Just using a soil auger here. I'm going to take three samples. They're going to be uh, every 20 uh, meters from each other and uh, break up our three samples and see what we got. All right, so we're going to try to get down to the B layer or level, and uh, that's where all the, uh, the minerals are trapped at. So we'll be able to see if we have any uh, indicators of something potential here. Okay, so got our samples back. This right here was 12 meters from the bottom of the base of that outcrop. This is our first sample. We got our second sample here, 20 meters from the base. These are all spaced apart, 20 meters. And then a third sample here, which is 16 meters. But I'm noticing on at least one of these that you can see minor amounts of sulfides amongst uh, some of this dirt. So we'll see what comes out of these. First one here. So I'm just going to quickly pan these out. So when you're soil sampling, you want to take about a kilogram of material, whether it's for a lab, whether it's for a pan test. Always want to try and get the same amount or approximate same amount. So this is the first one. Let's we'll see if we got anything. Tiny bit of black sand. Don't see much of anything in that one. Next sample here. Still a bit of organics in here, so we weren't quite down to the B layer. Okay, I'm seeing some sulfides, I think. Oh yeah, are we ever. Look at that. That is all sulfides. 
Whoa. It's all iron pyrite. That's what it's looking like. That might be gold. I think there's a couple pieces of coarse gold in there. Look at that. One, two, three, yeah. So, what does that tell you? That tells you that there is a subsurface deposit which does contain gold and sulfides, primarily pyrite. That's awesome. Okay, so another thing you want to do when you're soil sampling for sure is clean out your pan, make sure it's spotless, you don't want any cross contamination. So this is the one that it looked like I saw sulfides in. And I do definitely see sulfides. It's a coarse grained piece of iron pyrite. So we'll see what comes out of this. The fact that there's sulfides in both pans tells you that the deposit spans for at least 20 meters because that was our interval spacing. Yeah, you got more sulfides in here for sure. Okay, that's as far down as I'll go. Look at all those sulfides. Oh yeah. That's a lot. You don't usually see that much in a soil sample. So I'm not sure if there's any gold in that one. Looks like you got a couple little specks in there maybe. Right there. More sulfides in the last pan. Bit less gold I'd say. But still awesome, still a great sign. We're gonna definitely have to pursue that. Probably with some trenching, maybe uh, next year. We'll see. Thanks for watching everyone. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Drop us a comment, let us know what you think.